It's like a bat tornado. Australian town suffers as biblical plague of bats terrifies the locals. Surreal footage from the city shows a black veil of bats swooping down through the sky. Well, we've heard of locusts and uh, a swarm of locusts, but we've never heard of bat swarms. I haven't anyway, but this is something going on right now in Australia. This is from Elias Marat, Mines Unleashed. Residents in one Australian town are dealing with the fright of their lives after thousands of bats descended on them in an incident that's being compared to a biblical plague, quote-unquote. The veritable bat tornado enveloped Ingham, North Queensland over the past several weeks as upward of 300,000 of these winged creatures settled on the town. And we remember that they, we have to be aware that they also carry a lot of uh, germs and viruses with them. Now, surreal footage from the city shows a black veil of bats swooping down through the sky. The mayor of Hinch, Hinchinbrook Council, Roman Jayo, called the local news program A Current Affair, says there's four different species, and because they all have young at different times, there's hardly a window of opportunity when we can interact with these bats to try to move them on. And he says, it just seems to me that every bat in Australia is now in Ingham. The problem that we're having is that we're seeing, seemingly being influxed by more and more animals and the roost cannot handle it. Now, while the bats don't pose an immediate danger to residents, they are known to carry a rabies-like disease known as Australian bat lysivirus. The disease has killed three people in Queensland over the past 25 years. The bats have also brought an excruciating stench and a noise and a mess to the town. Now, I remember that we used to go on vacations and, for example, you know what they like to do? They like to stay in caves. That's where they... Uh, <laughs> and the deeper you go in a cave, the more of a stink there is and you know that there's bats there. Uh, or it's just terrible. They're guano and stuff. <laughs> Sorry, but it just stinks terrible. Um, children now in the nearby Ingham State School are too horrified to return to their school because of the frightful number of fruit bats that are on the campus, according to reports. Parents Adam and Susan Carella are among those who are considering taking their kids out of school. Susan said, they're not stepping a foot in that ground until something is being done. And she's right, I would do the same thing. Her husband Adam says it's like a bat tornado over the town. The Queensland Education Department has pledged to trim the trees surrounding the school and erect new fences to prevent the bats from further encroaching on the school. Mayor Jayo is concerned that the town is fast arriving at a crisis point and he says where they want to go is basically beside all our critical areas. That includes the schools, the hospitals, our kindergartens, our preschools. Because the animals are protected species under the Nature Conservation Act, local authorities are left with little recourse to deal with the plague of bats. This comes despite the proven success of using helicopters in 2012 to shift bat colonies out of the region without harming the critters. However, local politician Bob Catter has boosted that, boasted that if he had his way, he would, quote, be down there with a shotgun, end quote. Now, outspoken Politico said, there comes a point where I think not breaking the law really becomes dogging it, as we say in North Queensland. <laughs> Can you imagine? What would you do if you had this around your neighborhood? Oh my goodness, I'm going to tell you. What are, what is the local and it, what is the um, okay? What about an owl? Are, <laughs> you know why I'm saying that? I bought this fake owl. Actually, I bought two fake owls. Uh, they both look the same. It's just, <laughs> it's just that on one of them, I have I painted her little nails red with <laughs> red nail polish, and I said we have them. In our church, we I got them for the church, for the courtyard. You know why? Because there's a lot of cats come around the courtyard, and they do their business on the um, over the um, the potted plants that we have, and our garden is beautiful. And once they do their business on the on the on the soil of the potted plants, they ruin the plants, and they start the plants start dying. So I got these two <laughs> owls. 
And one of the, so they keep each other company. One of them has little red nail polish on her nails. That's the female and then the male. And I haven't put them up yet, but they have these little heads. They're little heads, you know, they, they head swing with a breeze. And uh, you fill them with sand. And supposedly they're so heavy that they don't topple over with the wind. But we have a lot of wind up there because it's at the base of the mountain. As you saw with one of the previous videos I, I uploaded today about the iridescent clouds. Um, so we said, you know, we'll get the... Um, because I saw it in one of the restaurants in the area. It was on top of the roof of the restaurant. <laughs> and I asked the lady who was right, I said, why do you have this... What is that thing on top of the roof? She says, that's a fake owl and I went and got one from the garden center actually two of them okay the one that has a red nail polish is a female and the other one is the male and we haven't put them up yet because uh, I got them so that the cats would look at them believe that they're real and stay away from the garden from the potted plants and I wonder if the uh, you know fake owls like that would be a deterrent for the bats to be in the area I think they would be a deterrent. The little fake owls with the, you know, the heads that bobble when the, when the breeze uh, uh, is uh, stiff enough. I don't know. Anyway, I have to remember to put up the owls in the garden, in our, in our church, in our little courtyard, because we didn't put them up yet. We have to get enough sand to, um, you know, find out where we're going to put them, because, you know, it doesn't look very nice putting owls on the roof of the church. We'll put it on top of our reading room or something. Uh, but this is really something. This is, um, I wonder if it has anything to do with the forest fires. Maybe uh, the fires um, somehow cause them to uh, have to leave their natural habitats and they don't know where to go now. You know, they, they just uh, don't have any place to go. That's frightening. Anyway, I'll leave a link below for you for this on uh, Mind Unleashed. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.